Welcome back. And in today's video, I'm going to roast some elk meat. It's neck meat. And I have about 10 pounds of it. And I'm going to roast it with spices so that I can shred it later and make it into some Mexican food. Okay, so I have 10 pounds of elk meat. And this is the neck meat. And I got about two and a half cups of water just to get started. We're just going to get our spices blended first. And then if we need to add some more water, we will. Okay, so let's start out with some cilantro. Hope everybody's having a good day. Now this is just to cook it in. So once I'm done cooking the um, elk meat and I shred it and everything, if I add, need to add more spices, I will. We'll just kind of maybe do a little taste and find out. But this is just to get it started. So when you cook it with the spices, it's really going to infuse into the meat. Now, the next one is cumin. And I don't want to use too much cumin. It's got kind of a strong, stronger flavor, so I'm not going to go too much on the cumin. I like the flavor of it, but... Like I said, I just don't want to go too much. And then I have some onion powder. And I don't want to actually cook it with onions because I think they probably burn the time it takes to cook it. Okay, and then roasted garlic. And then we're going to use some black powder. And then we're going to use some Mexican paprika. So this one's a little spicier than what you're used to, probably, if, if you were just making, like, um, potato salad or something like that. And then we're going to use minced garlic. And I don't think this one will burn, because I've done it before. Now, as I said, if this doesn't look like a lot of spices, I'll probably add more spices later, but this is just to cook it in. This is just to get it started, because this is all going to get eventually shredded. And we might need some more water. I'm just going to set this aside, and then I'm going to open my bag of meat. And see all these juices that are in here? This is going to actually go into the roasting pan. So, I'm going to grab a kitchen scissors, which I will wash later. Okay. So, what I'm doing is I'm standing it straight up and down. I'm just going to cut. Make sure you have a big enough roasting dish. If you have less meat than this and you have a glass one, that's good too, but if, the key is you want to have a lid on it, at least for part of the time of the cooking. Okay, so all these juices are going in here. Okay, and so because we seal the meal of this, it smells like, and this came out of the freezer, it took several days to defrost. It smells like fresh, fresh meat because it's been seal and milled. So that's good. I'm going to add a little bit more water. Okay, so that ends up being like almost four cups of water because I don't want to have to keep on adding water. There is water in here too in the meat. Well, it's not water. It's actually juices. So on this, just to give you a reference, this is, these pieces are cut like this size. So it's not going to take as long probably to cook as like a roast. Okay, so with all that, I probably shouldn't have to add any more liquid. And But you would be surprised how it starts just disappearing. So if it looks like I'm not making progress with it cooking, I might uncover it for a short period of time. But I'm definitely going to start with it being covered because we're not doing a roast that we're gonna have a bark on, we're doing shredded meat. So the end product, it should be shredded, like when you go out to dinner and you have shredded meat burritos. So what I'm thinking about doing, because it is 10 pounds of meat, it depends because sometimes it does shrink down. 
So what I'm thinking about doing is possibly doing two different um, meals. So I'm thinking about taking half of it and possibly doing tacos, shredded meat tacos. The other half, I might do burritos slash tamales. I'm going to do it the same way I would do tamales, but I might just do burritos. And that would be with my red sauce, which is on my channel. So, like I said, there's a generous amount here of liquid, but it will evaporate. And this way, I don't have to keep on going and adding. You don't want it, what, what you don't want is it to burn. So I don't have to keep on adding it to you know, water to this. But I do have to check on it occasionally because there has been times where all of a sudden there's almost no water. So, but I'm good with the spices, as you can see. And I'm going to go put it in the oven at 325. If you had more, if you had like lots and lots of time, you could even do it, like even reduce it a little bit more than that. But I think 325 for what I have is gonna work. So, as I said, you don't want too big of a roaster but you don't want too small. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the oven and we'll check back. Let's check on it in maybe an hour or so. Oh, one more thing, T talking about checking on it in an hour, I'm gonna probably set a timer, but I'm also gonna write down the time I'm starting this meat as a reference so I have an idea of how long it's been cooking. Okay, so I was previewing my video before a few minutes ago. As you can see, it hasn't been cooking long. And I noticed I, when I was putting my spices away that I totally forgot the oregano. So we're gonna add some oregano, because that's important. Cover this back up and put it back in the oven. Okay, let's take a look and see how we're doing. Okay, it's looking good, starting to cook. And I think I'm going to uncover it for just a little bit, for maybe about 30 minutes or so. Let some of that juices evaporate off, and then we'll come and check. Okay, so the meat's still uncovered. I just pulled it out a little, and I turned it over. Just been stirring it around to kind of get browned on top, but it's still pretty... Still got a lot... Oh, sorry. Still got a lot of cooking to do. And so I'm going to leave it uncovered for a little bit, but I probably eventually will cover it. But right now I'm just going to leave it uncovered. I just stirred it around and we'll check back. Okay, so I've stirred this meat around again and it's starting to kind of brown on the top of it. So I think I'm going to cover it back up and let it continue to cook and we'll check back in a while. Okay, so I came out here and I checked, I uncovered the meat and I checked on it and it is very very close to being done probably about 90-95% mm, done I actually took a knife and a fork and kind of just cut some pieces up you can kind of see just to see where we are at with it and we are extremely close but I would say to make it really easy to shred we should cook it for like another hour so I'm gonna cover it back up cook it for another hour and then we'll probably it'll probably be time to pull it all right so I pulled this out of the oven a little while ago, and it's still pretty warm. I just kind of let it rest. And as you can see, I'm just going to kind of show you with the fork. It's pulling apart super simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this cool down completely. I'm going to put it in the fridge, and then tomorrow I will show you how I shred the meat. And it smells very good, and I want to mention that it took around 10 hours and it was 10 pounds. So I guess a good rule of thumb would be an hour a pound for meat that is not tender to start with. But this is gonna be quite delicious and we will start shredding it tomorrow. All right, so the meat has sat in the fridge overnight so it's nice and cool and it's time to shred. So what I like to do is I like to use the lid and I might actually have to get out another container we'll see how we do and I'm just going to take some of this meat out of here and start shredding it and I like to use gloves because otherwise I end up getting the meat underneath my fingernails and I don't like that so as you can see it shreds really well there are some pieces that that um, I browned there that 
might have to have a little bit more work to get them to shred. And so after I shred all this, I'm going to stick it back in the juices and let it set overnight. And I'm going to make um, possibly tacos out of this meat. I might take my red chili. I have a video where I make red chili and I have some of that um, defrosting in the fridge currently because I froze some and take some of that and mix it in. I'm not sure what I'm doing with all the meat. It kind of depends how much I have. I might make some up and um, with the red chili sauce and then also freeze it for another time. So now there's, if you find a spot that has a little bit of fat, just take off the meat and then have a different container. I'm just going to grab a container here that's handy. It needs to be washed anyway. And I'm just going to throw anything that's like a piece of fat in there. And then just keep on shredding all this meat. And since it's 10 pounds, it will take a little bit of time. And as I said before, I cooked this for about 10 hours, 10 pounds, 10 hours. So if you had a four pounds, four hours, probably, depending on how tender your meat is. But I do want to also point out this. So I'm just going to keep on doing this. You don't have to watch me do it all. But I want to show you how much, you saw how much liquid I had in there and how much it actually got absorbed back into the meat. So I'm going to continue to do, to do this and then I will do a taste test. Okay, so here is my 10 pounds of shredded meat, and I'm going to put it back in here. And what I'm probably going to do, I think, is I'm going to take my red sauce, and I'm going to mix it in here, and then I could possibly make a tamale pie, which is on my, um, on my channel. You can check out the tamale pie. And I use my Mexican chili sauce. You can check that out. It's on my channel as well. And I'm just going to mix this all together, let it sit overnight. And then what I'm going to do is I'll probably heat it up. And whatever we don't eat tomorrow, I will freeze the rest. And I'm probably going to weigh it out too and just figure out um, how much to put in a storage container and then whenever I want to I can just take it out or maybe I will make tamales I'm not sure but the hard part is done and it's just very nice and I'm gonna taste some and it's cold but I'm gonna taste some anyway so let me get off these gloves and we'll do the taste test okay so I'm going to let that red sauce sit overnight, like I said. But I could take some of this and just set it aside just for tacos. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. But I do have the red sauce ready to go. And as I said, I'm going to freeze it in smaller portions. So let's taste some. And it's cold. And you could make a sandwich because it already has spices. So if you wanted to, you could put this on some bread, maybe melt some cheese on top, some salsa, or just eat it cold with a slice of cheese, maybe some um, that hot pepper cheese might be a really nice taste. Mmm, that is quite good. It would make a really nice cold sandwich too. Mmm, very, very tender and very delicious with all those spices. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. For those of you who subscribe to my channel, I really appreciate it. And if you don't, I hope you do. I have a whole bunch of fun videos. Um, main courses, side dishes, desserts, even a few like iced tea, different things, root beer float. Anyway, hope you have a great day and thanks for watching.